You want to be more comfortable in your home? Do you want your money that you spend in your home or improving your home to be well spent and not wasted? Do you understand anything about the energy efficiency of your home? The, not the equipment in your house, but the actual home itself. You have to understand two things, the exterior envelope and the conditioned space. I'm Dave Edwards and join us for Building Science Basics. Remember those old styrofoam coolers you used to buy at the grocery store? You'd put some drinks and some ice in there and they would keep your drinks cool for hours and hours. Now imagine that styrofoam container as your house. In fact, if we put some windows and doors in there and maybe a fireplace, it would look similar to a house, maybe a very plain house, but a house nonetheless. Now, in this visual, the styrofoam represents the exterior envelope of your house. It has floors and walls and a roof. It has doors and windows and maybe some skylights and vents and some chimneys, kind of everything you would see in a normal house. Now, if we look at the exterior of that house, we can see in this visual that there's heat coming in and out of that house. And that heat goes in and out of each of the six surfaces of that house. Those are kind of the exterior envelope. So in a crude manner, manner this box represents a, a cube, which is a six-sided square. And that inside of that cube is the conditioned space. So everything on the outside of the conditioned envelope is the outside of the house or the outside of the building. And the inside of the space is called conditioned space. Now that conditioned space is the place where your heating and cooling system are actually heating and cooling the house. Now, if we think about the building efficiency of a building and we don't look at just the equipment inside the building, what we really need to do is pay attention to the heating and cooling or the heat that goes in and out of that house and each of the surfaces. So uh, in this roof and then the floors and in the walls. And that's where we typically put our insulation. Now, this means that any heat that is gained in the summertime or heat that is lost in the wintertime has to go through one of those surfaces. So now we see that the efficiency of a house is directly related to the materials that are in the exterior envelope because those materials control the heat that goes in and out of a house. Now, that heat that goes in and out of a house is the efficiency of that house. The less heat that goes in and comes out of the house, the more efficient the building. So really what we need to do is look at the buildup of what makes up that exterior envelope, the, the styrofoam portion of, the, of that cooler. What we see is that we have multiple me materials that are actually in the exterior envelope. Firstly, as you can see in this figure, is the exterior materials or the siding. Now that could be stucco or wood siding or shingles or even fiber cement. And what we'll see also is that inside of that, we have a waterproof membrane, and then we have insulation. And we may only have one insulation layer, or we may have multiple insulation layers. We also have the structure of the building shown here, and then we have the interior finishes, and finally the drywall or the plaster, depending on where you are in the country. The material that we choose to operate inside this exterior envelope, the outside of the, of the building, really relates to not only how much it costs, but how it functions in its given role, and also how it affects the other functioning of the materials in that exterior envelope. So, for instance, do we put steel in the exterior of a building when we know that steel is highly conductive and will actually diminish the effectiveness of the insulation in the house? Do we make sure that our waterproofing and our air barriers are long-term and durable so that that house stays comfortable and uh, conditioned through the life of the building. So here's what we need to keep in mind though, is the exterior envelope is not just for insulating the house. The exterior envelope has actually many different functions. It functions to protect the house, so siding and roofing material. It performs a waterproofing and an air sealing function. It provides the structure of most of the buildings. It provides the insulation. It also supports the interior finishes and things like electrical and plumbing and windows and doors and everything else. So there's a lot of different ways that the exterior envelope functions for a house. Now, what's really important is to understand that every house is different. So every house, similar to the graph that you're seeing or the chart you're seeing here, has a different function. So in this project, the roof and the walls and the floors are actually the same uh, on the inside and the outside. So they're the same layer. And we can see by this red line that the roof at the top 
whether it's a flat roof or a sloping roof, is not only an insulation, but it's also the exterior protection and the interior finishes. The walls are exterior protection, insulation, and interior finishes, as well as the floor. But what happens if there's a, a house that doesn't have such a simple a structure, a house that has, for instance, an attic and a crawl space and a garage and a basement? Well, what we see is that there's lots of different ways to build these types of houses. And what we look at is where the insulation layer is to determine what is the insulated envelope or the insulated condition space of the house. And we see in this red line that defined by this picture, the insulation is actually at the bottom of the attic. And while it doesn't show it in the walls or in the floor, I'm assuming by this red line that we're actually insulating the conditioned space of the of the basement where the laundry equipment is and the water heater and the furnace system. But what happens if that's not in fact the way that the builders built that house? And in fact, they built it with the insulation across the top of the uh, conditioned basement or the unconditioned basement and in, inside the attic on the top of the attic. So underneath the shingles or the roofing material. And in fact, we have the conditioned space is also inclusive of the attic in this picture. So the conditioned space of a house is really defined by where the insulation layer is, and it's not specifically defined by the structure of the house. Some houses include the basement in the conditioned space, some don't. Some places include the garage as part of the conditioned space or the uh, crawl space as part of the conditioned space. In future videos, we'll actually talk about including the attic as part of the conditioned space so that when you put your heating and cooling system up there, they're actually within the insulated envelope of the house and they are not then exposed to all the heat extremes, whether the cold or the hot, that you would see in the winter and the summer months uh, by ex being exposed to the attic, the unconditioned portion of the attic. So what we're looking at now is two different building types. On the left, we have a single family residence and we interestingly see that based on our understanding from this video, that we actually have four different places just on the perimeter. And yes, I understand that we ha also have energy loss uh, through the front of the house and the back of the house, but that's harder to show in this picture. But we see that we actually have a lot of energy loss on all six sides of that kind of extended uh, cube or rectangle in this case. But what happens when we look at a project that's not, or a house that's not a single family residence, but we actually look at it in the context of a much larger building. And what we see is that in this project, we actually have a single unit that only has, shown by that blue square, shown surrounded by other units. Now, interestingly, if we're actually looking at that unit with respect to those uh, surrounding units, it's actually not going to lose heat to those adjacent units. We can expect that those adjacent units are also going to be occupied. So all of those units are actually insulating it. So this house may only lose heat from that, or this unit may only use heat, lose heat from that one blue s square, meaning that it's actually in itself very, very much more insulated than a single family residence. And what we see is that bigger buildings have exposure on a much smaller portion per unit. And the larger the building, actually, the more volume or the more space you get in the side of the building per the amount of exterior envelope. So larger buildings are actually gonna be much more energy, energy efficient than smaller buildings will because they have more interior space per exterior space. Now, they will still lose more energy, but that energy corresponding to the amount of square footage of living space they have or functional space they have, if it's a commercial building or an office building, is actually gonna be much less. So those buildings are actually gonna be more energy efficient than you would imagine. In closing, every building is different and every building occupies a different space in the environment. Buildings need to be designed for those different environments. And unfortunately, those environments are changing. Heat waves in Seattle and floods in California have shown us that we need to be designing buildings to be resilient for what the future brings. In future videos, we'll be discussing the many materials we have available to make our buildings more efficient, more cost-effective, and longer lasting. If you'd like to learn more about building science, about your home, or just follow our projects, press the subscribe button and follow us as we show you how to build a better way. Thank you.